this is a very uh, rather basic introduction to data tables since uh, in R, uh, the package which has uh, introduces a somewhat different syntax that most people are used to when using uh, data frames, even though it's basically just a data frame with some functionality added. And uh, what I liked about it mostly was the fact that it's very well optimized for um, for memory, efficient memory use, trying to use in, uh, in place updates for reference instead of the usual way of creating copies, temporary copies to assign uh, data frames, new structures uh, to a previous uh, structure. It has some facilities to minimize in memory copy because for large tables, uh, it's a problem, right? When you have like a few gigabytes of um, of uh, data and you're just just sometimes even adding a column or computing something in some rows or columns can create a temporary copy when you assign um, to the new st structure so uh, data table tries to not only allow working with large uh, tables in memory but also has quite a few multi-threading uh, options. I mean, um, it can, when it sorts, uh, tables can be very fast by various, for multiple columns and, and uh, it can uh, use, a, there is a way to set up how many CPUs can, can use uh, to optimize all these um, searches, joins and, uh, and sorting. So um, yeah, I try to summarize here the the data table uh, um, structure. So one of the interesting uh, ways to create a, a new data table is to once you have the data table package loaded, of course, is to to use the set dt uh, function, which essentially just attaches. Uh, this enhanced functionality to an existing data frame. So you don't need to create a copy. Um, <clears throat> so I'm summarizing here at the, at the top of the first, uh, some of the, we'll, we'll try to experiment with some of these. I don't know if, uh, just because I touch a bit at the end of uh, the DT plier package, uh, you might want to install it if you are following along uh, uh, this, might take, uh, I don't know, uh, a few seconds, I hope, <laughs> for most of you. I mean, if you don't update other packages you are prompted, maybe don't update. But if you want to install just running this first command at the, at the top should do it. Um, dev, assuming you have dev tools installed, right? Um, but otherwise, most of this uh, example code here is based on loading the data table package, which should be most, I think most installations, most setups have this already loaded, uh, uh, installed, right? <clears throat> Otherwise, uh, let me know, you can install, you know, install packages, right? Uh, and uh, data table, right? In case uh, you need it. I think, uh, yeah, in my case, uh, I don't need to, to run this command. Uh, <clears throat> Now, one of the first things that I, I really uh, enjoyed working with because it's as data table is optimized for very fast, uh, efficient uh, operations, like fread was was one of them, and um, um, it's <laughs> it's just a way to 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 read the f uh, tab delimited or comma delimited or actually even a custom delimiter uh, text files, even in compressed form, and even uh, it allows. Uh, running in, in, in Linux, uh, as at least uh, it allows running um, shell commands and piping the output, I mean, parsing the output uh, stream of the shell command directly into uh, fread, which can be used, you know, to grab something. Oh, I can, this, this is probably not visible. Oh, interesting, okay, sorry. It's supposed to be a file name here. Oh no, sorry. Actually, it was to grab the novel keyword in this 
junction CSV. In this example, it's using a, a shell command to, to parse the output and load it as a, as a data table. So I provided this uh, temporary URL so we can load uh, some data that I exported using fwrite, um, essentially from, a, from some RSE objects, which is column data and, uh, and the row data, uh, which uh, I think I can show you how they look like. Yeah, so this column data usually looks like this. You have sample IDs. Um, for RSE objects, you have uh, a lot of demographic data for uh, for the subjects and uh, some uh, summary statistics uh, metrics for the for the samples in that RSE object. So, um, in this case, um, so I just use fwrite to really just uh, write this data. I put it on uh, this URL to show that every actually can even, of course, load from URLs. It's like downloading, uh, downloading uh, directly from a remote location, not only local files. So of course I can also look and also compress. So it uncompresses on, on the fly and parses and assigns this, um, um, creates essentially a data frame. But in this case, uh, f is by default creating a data table, which again, it's a data frame with the ad added functionality. <clears throat> in this case, of course, we have a lot of columns in this example that we usually don't need. So another great thing again in, in, in trying to save memory, uh, sometimes we don't need uh, some of the large columns in, especially if you have a very large file like this BAM file column, I know we need this. So uh, it has an, an option you can select it before the, you can, of course, like in other, like in a data frame, you can drop the columns um, or keep only the columns that you want, which is the usual approach after you load it. But um, like in this case, I just, and it's a special syntax the data frame provides to unpack a, a, a vector of, uh, to, to, pro to provide a vector of, uh, of, of strings here to uh, to only keep the columns that you want. It's uh, they can be done, of course, with data frames in a similar way. Um, but in this case, yeah, I'm just uh, selecting uh, these columns that I'm interested in from the, so we don't have all those BAM file and other stuff, only have these metrics and uh, just a, a few columns that I'm interested in. Now, Again, it's save memory. Actually, you can do this while a file is is, is read from from a remote or local file, and unpacked. You can directly so you don't initially store in memory all these extra columns that you don't need. Just as F read is is reading the file, it can you can specify the columns that you that you want to keep, and it's gonna discard anything everything else. In this case, there is also a parameter to initially. Um, loaded uh, data load as a actually a data frame just a plain data frame it's rarely when you you sometimes you need that even though it's really transparent for you some using data table instead of data frames it's pretty much the same thing but i just wanted to show that essentially if you load it as a as a data frame not a data table and you can see the the class, of course, is going to be data frame if you have this option uh, set <clears throat> in place transformation. It happens when you use this set ZT function that I mentioned before. So you don't need to make a copy as, as you would do with sometimes you say as you cast as data frame or as data table or other structures. Uh, this usually create a temporary copy, right, to assign to the new object when you do something like that I showed here. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I guess it's not very visible with my choice of colors. But yeah, basically using set ZT, you have this in place. So now the class uh, trans is just attached this data table functionality to, to, a, to a data frame without uh, allocating even you know temporarily uh, additional memory to make a copy. <clears throat> now I also exported um, uh, like say what's called row data for RSEs, which is a junction features 
And I know there again, in, like in the previous case, I had a lot of extra columns that I don't need. So in this case, I'm just, um, again, making a selection. So of the columns that I need in, in a vector here, specify with select equal and read only this, these columns parse from these remote objects. And if you run this here, it shows actually, <laughs> I don't know how, if I, I guess I can disable this to make it less verbose because it, it's in interactive mode. It shows this um, as it downloads. This is a larger file because I <laughs> wanted to show that how it works with the over a million entries. Um, but I don't know why it takes a little longer than, yeah, it's, it should, should be quite quickly done. Uh, the same for the DG file, which has, actually this one has 1 million. Uh, while it's uh, loading in, in this data table objects, I, can, I also wanted to show that it's very easy if you really want, since, since these files were initially exported from what's called row ranges uh, or G, G ranges objects, uh, uh, it had this uh, sick direct export. So it was just sick names instead of a chromosome name. So, uh, and also, some capitalization that I don't want. So uh, I like very much this uh, feature in data table, this con con convenient function to rename columns, which if you don't, if you don't know this uh, package, sometimes you have to do some, you know, vector string transformations in order to, to the call names, in order to, to change some column names, but uh, using the set names function, which is provided by the data table package, it's very easy to provide just a list of old names and a list of new names, uh, column names that you, and it's gonna just rename the columns uh, for you. So you have whatever, uh, you know, names you want to use for this. So in this case, I, I just, so this should be a correspondence one-to-one, -one, of course, to the old names, which are these is what I filter from the files, remote files, and the new names, which I want to remain, replace sick names with chromosome, CHR, right? And just lowercase. Um, so uh, yeah, in this case, this of course, again, this, uh, this is done in place. You don't need, which is, I think can be done in, in data frames too. I mean, it doesn't create temporary copies. These are functions that affect, um, just a reference directly operate on the reference to the to the data frame data table well data frame actually memory interestingly enough uh, sometimes i just use this function for plain data frames because it works very well just set names to change some column names uh, conveniently for a data frame it doesn't have to be a data table because the function just it's probably just a convenience fun functions for the data frame in general but providing by, provided by this package. <clears throat> now, another difference is by default, it doesn't, um, data, data table doesn't, um, doesn't convert to factors, which is an option that can be also set when you, uh, when you, have, when you low, use uh, data frames, but by default, it, it prefers to keep uh, character columns as characters instead of, uh, converting them to factors. But another important difference that uh, some people might be frustrated about is it doesn't support row names. I think that's a, um, so row names are essentially dropped, but actually while you convert, even using set DT, I think you can actually add, uh, there's an option to convert row names to, to, to a specific columns, uh, specific column, just to add another, column to the data frame when you, um, there's, a, there's a design choice. Uh, I think there, there's a justification for that. The, the creator of the package uh, suggested that uh, row names have some limitations. Of course, they have to be unique. And uh, sometimes the syntax, some of the syntax that uh, the data table uses uh, really uses, um, really requires uh, referencing row names, uh, no row sorry, column names. Like when you do subsetting, uh, a difference from the data frame is that it's just using the same uh, subsetting, like a, actually I think the subset function uh, 
also recognize these column names directly uh, as variables. So, uh, but when you usually do this kind of subsetting of columns uh, with data frames, you have to specify um, the name of the data frame too. Um, <clears throat> in this case, uh, there is a way even to not use double quotes for the column names, which you would do when you use data frames. And um, so like if I just wanted these columns, these three columns to show how, of course, this is like something that works, the subsetting using uh, a list of vector of strings, which are column names also works with the data frames, but the data table pro provides this uh, convenience, convenient way to only refer to, to not use the codes, which sometimes it's a quite <laughs> annoying to, to type all those codes. So it's again, a convenience, but, uh, it essentially yeah, provides the same functionality just to subset uh, columns without having to type all those codes for the vector. <clears throat> now, adding two columns, uh, of course, can be done the old way, with, uh, which is the data frame way, uh, you know, just having to specify all these, um, um, the prefix for each column which is the data the data frame name right but the uh, data table has this uh, special operator internally um, defined so you can assign again just using um, the column name directly and uh, well in this case i'm just showing how basically if i add this lock locus um, let's say locus um, I, column, which is a composite column, uh, which it's usually, it's used in uh, raw data to identify a locus. Uh, let me see if I have it here. It's RDBG, I think, yeah. Yeah, um, so basically I created from chromosome start and strand, just a locus column, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's usually, it's also used in row names, I think, for the row, row ranges uh, and row data in RSC objects. <clears throat> but um, in this case, uh, if I, let's say, remove remove this column lock, locus, just I just added, so I can use the, uh, the new syntax uh, to add with them just using a simple column names instead. So this this time I uh, that's so now the syn this syntax is actually with using this operator it's another easy way to assign values to a, to a column is specific to data table so in this case I just remove this column uh, that I added earlier well I think it's not updated it's I don't like it when sometimes our studio yeah the view doesn't update so yeah actually the that lock column is no longer there. Uh, and now I add that. Actually, it's another way of showing here how to use this operator to add multiple uh, columns at once uh, by providing a list of values. Um, so in this case, I'm creating a, a locus and an up unstranded locus with dropping the strand. So if I do this, uh, I assign this um, here now. I don't, oh, it's okay. I guess it hasn't updated. Yeah, it's fine. I'm, <laughs> I can use head or something to show it, but basically I added this yeah, lock and constranted, <clears throat> which uh, yeah, can be used also again to, to check if um, for matches in an easier way. Sometimes when you want to, to see if there are, uh, in this case, we have junction coordinates so I created these um, two columns, but um, here actually I also I wanted to show that another convenience function that data table provides to reorder columns that because we 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 often wanted um, yeah I guess this one doesn't actually shouldn't be used right now because I'm trying to show that I usually want this two columns let's say to move in the front in front right instead of uh, having being at the end. Usually that's how, when you add new columns, they get uh, tucked at the end of the uh, data frame. 
so using this uh, set call order call yeah, this uh, convenience function you can actually specify the the actual order of the columns i mean in this particular case i use the set d function to to subtract first the the new names the new column names from the uh, list of column names uh, which is essentially so i don't know if you're familiar with set diff it's a way to make a, to, to compute the difference between like subtract a vector from another so in this case uh, i subtract for the column names of um, of this um, data frame or data table uh, these last two columns that i just added so i'm just dropping this from the vector and then actually tucking them in front so which this this vector is actually um, of course the new order that i want that's the result of this uh, function so yeah just to show it here so this is the order i want with loc locus and the unstranded locus uh, the new columns that i want to be the first the first two columns so it just by calling this set call order you can indeed uh, accomplish just that with this new vector of uh, columns so now actually yeah, i can see it here so yeah the, this is the new order so the columns at the beginning i guess this is not refreshed usually so but anyway just to show in the nicer table view yeah then lock and lock unstranded now are the beginning uh, now I'm gonna uh, drop lock and stranded because for the next examples I, I just need the, the locus, the first locus uh, column that I added. So yeah, this is I just wanted to see. Okay, we only have the locus column added and then the chromosome start and strand. Um, <clears throat> now, even for the earlier example, there was a way. Um, Sometimes we, we want to, to exclude uh, columns instead of, I mean, essentially, that's a, a good way to set, um, to, to not create a copy by dropping columns and uh, a bunch of columns that we don't need. So we, from this uh, file, I'm just showing again how, how you can use the ex ex a list of exclusion columns when you, after, when you parse the file. And in place, drop uh, this so the columns that you want to exclude. So in, in this case, after I'm reading, I'm just reading again this call data file, which is uh, the data frame here. I think it's uh, yeah, which looks like oh this yes, this one doesn't have that. This is an original file bit without dropping any columns. Let's say I have a, a dynamic list of uh, columns that I want to 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 drop i mean i only know what i want to keep in this case i want to keep these selected columns that's another way of doing it so I, like what i did it i did it before just while parsing but right now i'm i'm creating this set of of columns that i want to exclude so i can assign them in place to this uh, uh, to this um, data table at least this list of excluded columns can be placed in this using this syntax to assign all of them to null. So they, they will disappear from the, again, I'm using set diff here um, to create the difference between the original column names and the columns that I want, which results in the one columns that I want to remove, right? So um, here it's a set diff and then here I'm, I'm setting this was quite fast because it operates on the right now if on the reference again it doesn't create a copy so right now uh yeah i just dropped all the other columns that i i mentioned now because of the structure of this uh oh this is actually in the right order i think but just to make sure i had some cases where some co some uh, the columns are not in the right order so if i really want to specify here not only the columns that I that I want to keep and, and not exclude, uh, not drop, but also the order when they appear. I can also use the set call order as I mentioned before to actually make sure that the, the order of the columns in this data frame is exactly uh, as I wanted it. Um, so yeah, probably this didn't do 
in this case for this particular uh, table didn't probably didn't change the order i mean because it was yeah this the same in the original but uh, i had yeah another case that, that's where the example where the br num columns were tucked at the end instead of the beginning and usually i want that um, to be a, the, the front um, <clears throat> now adding um yeah, if there's to be consistent and I wanted to join later uh, these two data frames for the data tables for by the column, uh, the locus uh, field. So I'm just gonna add this locus to the DLPFC row data that I loaded earlier. Make sure the order is there. So yeah, if I just uh, let make sure that the LPFC, it says, yeah, we are, I jump back to row data at this point because that's what I'm gonna join by, by, the, by the locus, by the location of the, um, of the junction that, that was in this file, <laughs> junctions. Now, just, that, uh, just to, to show how we can also, the basic way to filter is similar to, the filter rows is similar to what we are used in data frames or in actually in this case it's since the operator the the square brackets operator in data table uh, recognizes uh, column names directly without having to to use the dollar notation you know to to prefix with the actual data frame name it works like the subset function in that sense um, and you can just use in this case, if I just want to see, you know, for this, uh, this is like the novel junctions would mean because they are not in gen code, this field, I know it means uh, this class field shows uh, the classification of the, of the junctions in this particular file. So if I just do, do this, I'm showing just for the gene S and X19, um, this uh, only the the novel essentially novel junctions because in gen in this case for this um, this classification in gen means in gen code so it's going to have um, if you just you know look at everything that's different from that you have the these uh, additional classes exon skip alt start end I think they are the only two types. Uh, yeah, so <clears throat> for gene uh, SNX19, so they are just the uh, novel junctions reported for this uh, gene in this file. Now there is a general uh, selection strategy that uh, that data table uses for this um, for the square bracket operator, which makes it slightly different from the uh, from the usual way we do use square brackets for data frames as it's inspired mostly from uh, database uh, queries. I mean, the second, the second uh, parameter here is usually like what corresponds to select in SQL. Um, and uh, the first is just to be consistent with data frames is usually subsetting rows, right? But here for the select, uh, for the second uh, oper uh, parameter, you actually can use uh, a lot of R functions that operate on 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 this on the columns that you want to select, and there is a third uh, by option that we're gonna see in the next example that provides grouping aggregation uh, for for these uh, selections when you do selection. <clears throat> so just to see uh, in this case, uh, I just wanted to show the we talked earlier about classes in this case and for this for these junctions <clears throat> we have these classes when in gen in gen means that are the known junctions <clears throat> uh oh there is a novel class too but that means there is no in this particular case for for these junctions the novel class means there is no shared uh, alternate start and end or there's no exon skipping so that they, they actually have <clears throat> Both the uh, donor and the acceptor uh, are are novel, are not found in 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 gen code in this case. We didn't have this uh, in the earlier table. Actually, the novel class wasn't present for this gene SNX19. <clears throat> um, 
Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, sorry, I wanted to go through these examples because they're interesting. The way of chaining uh, various filters is and ordering is by essentially chaining uh, these square brackets. So in this case, uh, if I look at the, if I want to select all these novel uh, junctions in SNX19 and with the mean expression above 0 0.1 and order by class, um, just to have, I mean, it was a similar question um, query bef before, but I didn't order by class. So now at least you can see the first is the all start end uh, and, the, and then uh, Exxon skip class <coughs> classes. <coughs> Um, so chaining is, is different from, especially if you're used to deployer, uh, you usually use the pipe operator and we'll see later that it's still possible with the emulation using DT plier, I think. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, probably the way to pronounce it. <clears throat> now, of course, uh, order, the order um, function here that recognized by, by data table, it can provide uh, multiple criteria that for to order so in case in this case i want to order by decreasing mean expression within each class so um they will be uh, i guess the mean expression doesn't fit in this but yeah yeah they are uh, sorted uh, decreasing in decreasing order using the minus i think this is also a similar convention used in uh, ordering data frames, right? Only in this case, you can chain using square brackets um, like this. Now, there are some special variables that are used inside uh, within um, recognized by, by data table inside the square brackets, which is that like this dot uh, period n, dot n, uppercase n uh, special variable, <laughs> which essentially is the number of entries in, in each group. It only makes sense when you have a grouping. Like I mentioned there, the last uh, option by equal can specify grouping by, uh, by one or more uh, columns. So in this case, I can just count. It's another form of using table. If I use this, uh, that query above uh, using dot n and the by equal class, to just gonna show um, the number of uh, items in each group, right? Which is not very useful right now, but uh, well, I guess, yeah, I can show you how many types of novel uh, junctions you have uh, in, this, uh, in this gene, in this example. <clears throat> um, also, you can create a new, using this <laughs> interesting dot parenthesis, uh, um, a syntax, you can create mul uh, new fields, new columns, essentially, uh, that operate in this case, I'm using aggregate functions, uh, like mean and sum in these examples. Um, so you can also compute, you know, the mean expression for all the novel, in this case, all the novel um, uh, <clears throat> classes of, um, junctions all the novel junctions <clears throat> by by class it's not really a very useful query in this case um or uh, in this case oh yeah i comp i was computed the sum of all these uh mean expression in each class and can also as again showing just you can chain um decreasing uh, i order by decreasing decreasing um some uh, the, the new field that I just computed. You can, this is not uh, indeed very, it's more like, it's something that I definitely could have be done before with, uh, with other, um, with data frame operators or deployer. Uh, it's just somewhat more compact way, I guess, of, of, of doing these operations, even though I admit, I admit it looks, can look a little bit cryptic, I mean. <laughs> Um, now, of course, you can show multi cal multiple calculated uh, fields, like both the uh, mean expression and some expression per class, some of the exp uh, mean expression per class. Um, and you know, of course, I can sort by either of them, or if I want to add another 
uh, operator here. Again, this is how chaining of uh, of these uh, operations work works in a data table. Now there is also another special variable that's recognized inside the square brackets for data table is this dot sd, um, which looks. Uh, I mean, uh, first of all, when you saw that, you know, I thought of standard deviation unfortunately is not that <laughs> or anything like that uh, it's just a subset of data for the essentially just uh, encapsulates the the columns for the uh, the data set for the current group so this expression is evaluated it only makes sense when you use a by expression in this case i use i group by gene and class and it's just a way of showing show, uh, saying show me all the in this very simple syntax, just show all the uh, data except for gene and class are going to be tucked in the front in this case, in this kind of query. Show the other columns in these groups, how they are grouped. So it's going to look like that when you do a, a grouping query like this. Uh, the a, a grouping columns are going to be showing in the, at the, in the front, the first two columns in this case. <clears throat> and then as dot sd here show, uh, says, show me uh, the other columns for this group. It's uh, again a little bit cryptic, but uh, it's also very compact. And the way to use this even more in a more interesting manner is you can actually specify what columns to be included in this dot sd um, denominator and even apply a function to, to all these columns uh, uh, using L apply in this case. So we specify the important thing is to we only want to target the, target the numeric uh, columns when you when you do this kind of uh, like cal cal calculation of like say mean for all these columns. So I select the columns that I want to show the average for here in using this special syntax again dot sd columns right. Uh, which are age and number of reads and some metrics. Again, doesn't necessarily make sense, but uh, let's see how this looks like. Um, so, well, even though they are called age and uh, and uh, numbers, they actually averages here. I can change the names, um, but. Um, this now the groups are because I use these aggregate functions. The groups are. A collapse, so you don't see the whole expansion of the group here in dot s like it was the before before with dot sd. Now we we have this um, the output of l apply. Um, so we have these these are all averages for these groups. I made these groups uh, by di uh, diagnosis and race in this case. So we have this for controls and uh, this race, these groups, and all these mean average values being uh, calculated. It's still quite compact, I, I think. Now, um, another powerful feature that sometimes used transparently, depending on the queries uh, that the uh, data table indexes, uses in, in indexing. And you can specify what keys to use to optimize some searches or some uh, joins or, or or just queries like that, which with was called set key in this case, or I think it has also a set index. Set key by default when when you when you run set key it uh, without uh, optional parameter I think physical is called is gonna sort by. Uh, automatically sort the, the data table by whatever uh, columns you specify in the set key function. And you can set the uh, multiple, you can use multiple um, columns here. Or with set key V, you can actually specify a, a, a vector of, of uh, columns, column names. But in this case, if I say I, I set set key, I use set key for log, so, um, using by by locus by the locus that i created earlier the which is there's a chromosome strand and uh, this is going to be a, in this case this is a character if i as i run this uh set key um right now uh let's see actually this two again let me see if i use set they should be sorted now 
alpha alphanumeric sorting by the locus. Um, let's see, are the EFC, right? I just look at this. Uh, it's going to start with chromosome 10, which is uh, not the original order, because that's apparently the, uh, the, um, the alphanumeric sorting for this uh, long um, coordinates. It, it, it's not really important the order right now because what I'm using this, uh, I'm applying these keys. So it creates like a data table, creates like um, an index and essentially internally and optimizes uh, joins and searches by this particular key. So I created this key by locus because I would like to join using merge in this case. Uh, merge has, again, is an overread. Um, already the method um, by the data table package. <clears throat> so it, it, it accepts some, uh, I think some functionality. Of course, it keeps track of indices, I mean, keys that I established. So if I just do a simple merge, uh, which is an intersection set of the two. So um, actually I wanted to show here the number of rows is um, for the, the largest, RDDG um, data, data, data table is uh, over one, one, 1. 1.4 million, while the DLPFC one had um, 732,000 uh, um, junctions. And some of these junctions, as we, told, I mean, some of you know in the work that we do, uh, for various data sets, we have these sets of no junctions reported by the Speakeasy pipeline. Um, that uh, many of them are actually shared. But uh, when we join data sets, we actually have to create uh, this uh, large um, um, intersection, not intersection, actually union uh, of this, uh, of this uh, in, in <clears throat> introns, uh, junctions actually. <clears throat> so if you just do a regular merge, you will have an intersection, which is not what we need, but I wanted to show that, uh, yeah, this shows that actually this is a number of shared uh, um, junctions between these two, uh, these two data sets, right? So what we usually want is to do a full, what's called a full outer join, which is a union of, of, the, of the two sets of junctions. And when this, when we do this, um, you see that the, yeah, this takes a little longer because, and the total, the sum of this is actually, is much, it's much, since it's a union, a lot of these common junctions are eliminated. I mean, not eliminated, counted only once, the shared junctions. Um, so the total is uh, what we usually get when we, we, we merge, let's say RSCs, junction RSCs in, in, in our work. Uh, so how, how this looks like is, when, when there are junctions that are only one set and not the other, a full outer join will, will put uh, NAs in that case. So if I look at the, if I do this join using this option, all equal true to set all this, um, to do all this full outer join, um, the output will have a lot of NAs for, um, for one of the data sets that doesn't have the junctions from the other, right? This could be in, uh, in the other, in either of these columns. In this uh, example, only DLPFC data set doesn't. So what I, uh, I don't know if I show, oh, here, of course, in case it's not clear, I also renamed uh, some of these because we had initially a mean expression is gonna show up as mean expression dot X and mean expression dot Y in the two, when you do this kind of join, when you have duplicate uh, column names. So I just use this uh, syntax uh, to, to rename on the fly to show exactly that the DG mean expression values from these data sets are, you know, I rename it as DG and the LPFC. That's why it looks like, like that, neat like that. Uh, and of course, what we usually do when we merge uh, junctions data sets, we only, we want to set, because that's what it actually means that these junctions were not found in, in a specific data set. So we want to set all these NAs to zero, right? So we do this. Uh, sorry, what did I do? Uh, I think I didn't save. 
oh, I, I skipped a few steps here, sorry. Uh, yeah, I wanted to show that actually you don't even need to build a lock, uh, the locus um, uh, field, uh, a special column. You can actually use the existing ones if when you use multiple composite keys, like in this case, locus was built from chromosome start and strand, right? And you have much better sorting if you use this, you keep these columns separately. And I want to, to select only these columns because there are, money, I mean, the join columns and the mean expression. And in this case, I set the, the keys to be this uh, chromosome start, end, and strand. And using physical equal false means it don't sort the physically the table, the data table, only keep this in, in memory. Um, sorry, keep the index in memory that can still be used to, to speed up joins. So if I create now a similar to what I did above, um, I try to create this full auto join between, between these uh, two data sets. Of course, it's, uh, I can't, uh, it have to follow all this chaining that I'm using here to rename columns and to present them nicely because it gets a little bit more complicated when we have these composite keys. Uh, now this, this has this column separately. We didn't have to create the locus, but it's essentially the same output, only the different, the order is, is, is different now. But um, chromosome start and, st and strand, uh, these columns are kept separate. <clears throat> separate. And in this case, indeed, usually what we want to do is to set this, um, whatever was, NAs to zero, right? So we can actually, yeah, I guess, uh, well, it's of course convert to zero. Uh, this is how we usually join, uh, yeah, in sets of junctions that are different between two data sets. Well, I guess I'm kind of running uh, wrong. I don't know, uh, sorry, of course, of, can, I guess I went a bit fast, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, you can actually let me know at any point. I haven't done this before, so. Uh, well, now there is, I, I guess I didn't have time to go to reshaping. There is an interesting, there are various ways to do reshaping, you know, pivoting. And that's a entirely different, and there's a lot of, uh, could be uh, a lot of uh, explanations could be uh, dedicated to that. It's an interesting topic, how to reshape uh, tables. Uh, but, um, yeah, I have this uh, URL here if you want to check these details. Uh, just to, because it's getting a little long, I guess, just to uh, wrap up, I, I, I was mentioned the other day in a tweet, this deep DT plier package, uh, which is, I looked into it, it's just a R wrapper that uh, tries to convert uh, this data table um, functionality and filtering and indexing uh, into, the syntax that uh, most of you know using dplyr, which is you know using the pipes, uh, the pipe chaining in dplyr, so which is translated in this data table chaining uh, using square brackets, uh, and there are some disadvantages of that uh, with using this dplyr instead of directly using a data table, right? Um, some of the expressions are, some of the operations are not possible, <clears throat> like uh, cross joints and rolling joints. I didn't really get into this. Cross joints is like a Cartesian product. So I guess all against all versus all, which is sometimes useful. <laughs> um, and uh, rolling joints, I don't know. I never really use them. They're more uh, interesting feature of the, of the data table. <clears throat> now, Sometimes the uh, deployer chaining uh, involves uh, copy operations that cannot be avoided. And in large tables, this is a problem. When you use mutate, usually you create a, a in a chain, right? Uh, pipes, you create uh, these uh, copies, intermediate copies. Even though they are temporary, we have huge tables in memory, like many gigabytes, this might, uh, might, might be a problem. So that's why it's better if you can use directly the, the chaining, the square bracket chaining in data table. Now, like a simple example that I had before with the showing the RDG, you know, just um, in this case for two, gen, two, two genes, uh, TCF4 and SNX19. Um, 
And if you use uh, the dplyr to, to do the same thing, unfortunately, you have to import dplyr too. You can use this uh, more familiar for, for some of you syntax of chaining uh, with a pipe operator, I think it's called, right? Uh, to accomplish the same filters and the grouping and the summarize in the same way. Um, so yeah, uh, yes, I mean, the output should be identical, but just dtplyr helps in essentially writing it like that if you don't want to, to use this kind of syntax here. <laughs> You can write it. it's the same amount uh right i guess of typing pretty much <laughs> um the difference is that this is theoretically uh, faster uh, more efficient uh, to use the original data table syntax instead of chaining like that which involves the risks of as i said of copying creating temporary copies which can be risky for the very large tables yeah i guess it's uh I could stop here for now, sorry. <laughs>